Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me Gemma and I've got Dane with me today and we are going to show you something delicious from the Crumbs and Doilies Bakery. Yes, and the CND website has had a little zhuzh recently since we launched our new brownie boxes and the CND team have been creating so many new delicious tray bakes for you guys and they've been flying off the shelves ever since. And so we thought we would show one of them for you today, which is the Lemon Meringue Pie Blondie. So, so good. It's a really zesty, chewy blondie and it's packed full with white chocolate chips. It's got buttery bits of pie crumb, my fave, and it's also got little crispy bits of meringue. It's so good. It's really zesty, perfect for summer. Um, but if you want to see what else comes in a brownie box, then head over to crumbsanddoilies.co.uk, check out the new site. And also, why not become a member over there? Um, if you become a member, every time you buy something through the website, you earn crumbs. And the more crumbs you get, the more money you get off your next order. And also, another really cool thing that the members get is a discount. If you've been a member for a month or more, you get a discount on your birthday cake every year. How cool is that? Very <laughs> cool. So make sure you sign up to the mailing list because oh, yeah. you get like all the exclusive offers and discounts ahead of time so that you know about them and you can make full use of them. But um, back to the blondie mm. because that is what you're really here for. The first thing that has to happen with every blondie is burnt butter. Yes, and I've already made some in the pan and basically We've shown you this many, many times, but I just melted about 160 grams of butter um, because we want 135 grams and you lose kind of some of the weight in the water. Let it cook for about five to six minutes and it'll start to smell really buttery and nutty and you'll start to see little golden brown flecks at the bottom of the pan. When you're stirring it, it'll get like frothy, but once you turn it off, you'll see the golden liquid nectar that is at the bottom and it's absolutely delicious. It's what all blondies start with. So, I've got 160 in there that was, but we need 135. So I'm just gonna put the bowl straight onto the scales and weigh 135 grams of butter. I can smell it. It it's smells so good. Honestly, yes. using burnt butter in your bakes will just elevate it so much. You're putting it in your cookies, even your brownies, even your icings. Yes. Why not? A bit of extra effort, but I think that's okay. Exactly. Um, this is the perfect amount, um, but if you have like a little bit more, just make sure you scrape all those little flecks of butter at the bottom because that is where all the flavor is. So that has been cooking, but it's cooled down a little bit because you don't want to put it in super hot because it will melt the chocolate chips that we're going to put in. But next, I've got some soft light brown sugar. I've got 335 grams going in here. All you want to do is just give it a little whisk together. It's not going to do much. Just break up the sugar lumps and make sure it's all one mixture. And because this is a lemon blondie, we're going to need some lemon zest. Very fresh. <laughs> um, so I've got three here, and I'm just going to zest them straight into the bowl because as you're zesting, you can like see all these spurts of the lemon oil, and you want to get all of that flavor in. So do it straight into the bowl. It smells so good. So fragrant. I love it. I love it too. Right. I got your eggs ready. Thank you very much. Got three large eggs. Here yes. you go. Thank you. Going in and then just give it a whisk together until it's a really nice smooth mixture. I'm also going to add three quarters of a teaspoon of vanilla extract for added yumminess. Yeah. That is pretty much it. We're nearly done. Dry ingredients to add next. Oh, I've got a sieve here for you if you want it. Thank you very much. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Because <laughs> we've got some baking powder going in as well to this flour, which we've got 270 grams, to which I'm going to add just a half a teaspoon of sea salt and then a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And sieve those in just so that it mixes the baking powder and the salt together like so, push those little bits through. And then all we're gonna do is fold it in, but not completely because you still wanna see little bits of flour because we're gonna add pie crumb and meringues and white chocolate and we don't wanna overwork the mix. So once it's almost all mixed through, you can start putting in your additions and all your bits and bobs. So we've got pie crumb, which is my all time favorite thing. It's in the book. I've loved making it for years. It's a really versatile thing. You can mix up the flavors. You can add it to all sorts of stuff to make it even more delicious, which is literally what we're doing here. So <laughs> it's really, really easy. Just start with a medium sized bowl and into that put 110 grams of plain flour and then add 20 grams of caster sugar, a pinch of salt, 
60 grams of melted butter and a teaspoon of cold water. You want to start off by using a spoon to mix it and once things are starting to come together, get your hands in there and start scooping the dough up, breaking up the bigger nuggets with your fingers. Keep doing this and keep kind of scooping it and sprinkling the nuggets and after a couple of minutes, they will start to become more round in shape. If the nuggets aren't bonding together, you might need a drop more water, and if they're too sticky, you might need a tiny sprinkling of flour. Just use your judgment, but what you want to end up with is lots of little round balls and nuggets of various sizes. Spread them all out onto a lined baking tray and bake them at 170 degrees for 10 minutes until slightly golden all over. And then you just want to keep those in an airtight container. They'll actually keep for ages. I've had some for like a month before and they've been totally fine. We only need 35 grams for this recipe, so in you go. Yes. Oh. I'm doing it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can just nibble on the rest. Also, we'll need a little bit more for the top too. What yes. else do we need? We've got some meringues. So we bake these really crispy and crunchy and all we did to do that was use two egg whites, weigh those and then you want to weigh out double that amount in caster sugar. Get your egg whites whipping in a stand mixer slowly at first and then increase it to a medium speed. When they've started to become foamy like a bubble bath, start adding the sugar just one tablespoon at a time and then once all the sugar is in, you can turn up the speed a little bit more and then let that whip for a few minutes. You're just looking for the mixture to be glossy and for all the sugar to have been dissolved. Towards the end of the mixing, you can add a pinch of salt and a pinch of cream of tartar, which will just help to stabilize the meringue and also a drop of vanilla extract. Mix that all through really, really well and then transfer it to a piping bag with any kind of nozzle you like. We're just breaking these up into the blondie so it doesn't matter too much, but we've gone for a star nozzle because we find it creates like a lot of surface area that crisps up really well. Pipe out some nests onto a baking sheet and then bake it at 100 degrees for around 50 minutes. You want these to be really, Crunchy. And then you want to close the oven door and just leave them in there to cool down completely. And you end up with these. The flatter that you pipe them, the less time you'll have to leave them in there. So the bigger you make them, the more time they'll have to be in the oven. So Stop. make them nice and small. I've started already. Sorry. Oh, she started. <laughs> it just broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, we only need two, so just crumble them in and make the pieces kind of big as well because you want nice chunky pieces of meringue. And lastly, we're just going to add 110 grams of white chocolate chips. In they go. Ooh, don't, don't waste them. I know, there's there. the one left in there. <laughs> <laughs> and then just fold that through until it's all combined. All mixed together. Mm. Gemma's got a tin prepared. Voila. <laughs> this is an eight inch um, <laughs> loose bottom square tin. You guys always ask where you can get them. Literally, just type it into Google and you'll find it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I know that sounds really self-explanatory, it. <laughs> but it's true. No, um, the brand that we use is uh, Silverwood, but any loose bottom square tin will do. And then just level that out with a small cranked palette knife. Just make sure you get into all of the corners, smush it down. Mmm, that's going to have all the good bits in every bite. But not yet, because we still haven't put even more lemon in it, um, in the form of lemon curd. Now, lemon curd is such a classic. Like, we use it in the bakery all the time. There's recipes for it on YouTube, in a book. But it's really easy to make, so all you need to do... I'm holding it really weirdly. <laughs> um, all you need to do is grab a heatproof bowl and put 65 grams of caster sugar in it, and then the zest of one lemon. Then juice the lemon and maybe another one to get 65 grams of lemon juice. Add one egg and then three egg yolks and then the juice and give it a really good whisk together just to combine it before popping it onto a pan of simmering water. Keep on stirring it slowly with the whisk and then after about eight or ten minutes, you should see that the mixture is beginning to thicken. Once it's thick enough that you can make ribbons on the surface, remove it from the heat and pop in 50 grams of cold chopped butter. Now this is really important, it stops the cooking and it also makes the curd really rich and yummy. Stir that all in until the butter is melted and completely combined. And then when it's still hot, pass the curd through a fine mesh sieve because there will be some little eggy bits that will make the curd a bit grainy. Yuck, we don't want that. <laughs> and then cover it with cling film and leave it to cool completely and what you end up with is this bright yellow. You can use store-bought curd, but I always find that store-bought curd is like really pale and more sweet than tart. I like my curd yeah. to be like oh, It's puckering. a little bit like um, translucent as well. It's not yeah. as like opaque as this. And like with the meringues as well, you can mm. also buy them from the store. No judgments. No. No judgments. Especially when you only need like one or two. But I'm just going to basically stab my blondie all over. I don't want to go all the way to the bottom because sometimes the curd can get a little bit hot on the tin and burn a bit. And also it can make the bottom a bit soggy. You want to make sure that each bite is going to have a little pocket of yummy lemon curd. And then if you find that when you've been injecting your lemon curd, it's kind of ballooned out on the top, just get a palette knife and like 
scoop the top bit off because it, it can go a little bit brown in the oven and you don't want that. Anyway, speaking of ovens, we've got our oven preheated to 170 degrees C. It's a fan assisted oven as per usual and we're going to bake this for 25 minutes. How do we check it, Dane? If it's set around kind of two centimetres around the edge, like the border, and it still jiggles a little bit in the middle, it's golden all over the top, you're jiggly. good to go. It's got to be a bit jiggly, guys. <laughs> all right, 25 minutes. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> We're back. The blondie is baked, but as with all blondies and brownies, you want to cool it to room temperature and then whack it in the fridge for at least a couple of hours, I would say, because that way it goes a really nice chewy texture and also it makes it really nice to cut. Makes a nice clean Too cut, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> We're not finished with it yet. We're not, no. So I'm going to finish it with a little bit of white chocolate. Um, I've melted 100 grams and I just coloured them yellow using some Color Mill coloring. This is oil based and great for chocolate because it doesn't seize up. Now I'm going to start with the darker yellow and snip the end off of that. And for the darker yellow, I've used a mixture of the yellow coloring and then also the mango as well, um, just to deepen it a little bit. And you just want to go nice and slow when you're drizzling. You don't need to go too quickly and make it like manic. Take your time. This is the decorating. Yes. <laughs> this is like the final stages of making it really pretty. So take your time and then I'll go in with the second color and I'm just aiming to go in between the lines that I did first. So you can see both colors. I'm just breaking up a bit of meringue. I'm doing it into a bowl first rather than doing it directly on top of the um, chocolate just because I don't want to cover the thing in dust and they do go really <laughs> dusty. Um, but you want to apply all your other decorations while the chocolate's still melty, otherwise it's not going to stick. It smells good. Oh, I want to eat it. Will you do the honours? I will. Oh, good. Okay, here we go. Ooh, that cuts so nicely. Mm. Oh, let me just show you the inside. Wow, look Woo! at that pocket. Ooh. Look at all the bits and bobs. Yes, <laughs> and that pocket of curd is just. I've got one too. <laughs> Cheers. Right, here it goes. Oh my god. Whoa. Wow. So, mm -hmm. so fudgy. So zingy. Really zingy. And the crunch from the meringue. Mm hmm. Mm. And those little buttery nuggets of pie crumb. Obviously, I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> it really does make a difference when you put it in the fridge. It really does. It's not like you can't get that clean cut. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. We <laughs> certainly are enjoying yes. it. Um, obviously, we'll be back next week. In the meantime, don't forget you can join our bake club over on Patreon if you want to help support the channel and get some perks, sneak previews. You get downloadable PDFs of all our recipes and in the coming weeks we will be doing some extra stuff for you so stay tuned and if you can join the Bake Club we appreciate you, we are so grateful so thank you so much. Yes and make sure that you like this video if you liked it, the button is just below. They so like it. They like, I know exactly, we know you like it and also we know that you're going to watch another one so why don't you just like click subscribe mm. and then you'll get notified every time we upload a video. Because I know that you're going to click on another one, and another one, and another one. You're going to go, go into a hole. Exactly. The best hole. Yeah, and whether you bake it or not, or you're watching this like 3 a.m. in the morning, you're still enjoying it. So, <laughs> just subscribe. <laughs> and it helps us out as well. It really does. It lets us know we're doing the right thing. So, yeah. yeah. And don't forget to post your pictures as well. Oh, yes! Got to post them Please if you make do. it. Um, tag us on all the socials. It's just at Crumbs and Doilies. Real simple to remember. So we will be back next week with another delicious treat for you. So stay tuned and we will just continue to eat blondie until the cows come home, I think. Mmm. So fudgy. I love it. I love it more. I'm obsessed. Mm-hmm.